Hello everyone and welcome back to part two of our series on the WLED project. Now, if you haven't already seen part one of the series, make sure you watch it first. In that video, we went over what the WLED project is about, what hardware is needed, and how to get everything assembled. Now, in today's video, we're gonna look at the software side of things. So we're gonna start by flashing WLED, taking a look how to configure the software, and finally, we're gonna look at the Home Assistant and Octoprint integrations. So let's jump right in. So after you've connected your ESP board to your computer, make sure that you hear the new hardware sound on Windows, the, the, the ding that you hear when you plug in your device. If for some reason you don't hear that, it may be because you're using a power only USB micro cable. Make sure it also supports data transfer. So then we need to go to install.wled.me and we'll get this page here. So this is the all-in-one web installer for WLED. So we can click the install button right here and our device shows up here on COM port five. If for some reason it doesn't show up, then we can click the no device found and go find the drivers for a particular chip. So either the square shaped chip or the rectangular chip, you can look at the board, whichever one you happen to have. But since mine shows up, I'll go ahead and click on the serial port and hit connect. So I'll go ahead and hit click install WLED and click install. So if you do struggle with getting your ESP to flash, it gets stuck at preparing installation, then all you need to do is go to this URL here below, and that'll take you to the install via the ESP GUI instructions from the WLED project. So first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and download the flash tools. So from Expressive, so we'll click right here and download the first link. Then we also need to grab the latest firmware bin file from the releases page. So we'll go here and we wanna grab the latest one for our ESP8266, which is the WLED underscore 0.13.3 ESP8266. Click that, get that downloaded. Let's open up the flash tools. Go to the application here, run that. Of course, you're gonna get an error message because it is gonna be accessing serial ports. And then we have the GUI pops up. So we're gonna select the chip type is ESP8266. We're in develop mode and UART. So we're going to select what we're gonna download here. We're gonna click on the three dots, go to our downloads directory and grab the WLED bin file. Okay, make sure we check this box so that it will be flashed to the device. And then in this first box here, we need to do zero X zero. We'll click the default button to set all the default spy configuration. We're gonna set spy's clock speed to 80 megahertz. The baud, we're gonna go ahead and drop that to, we're gonna drop that to 921600. And we need to select our COM port. So ours is COM port five. And even though the instructions say set flash size, it doesn't look like it gives us the option of the new version. So now that everything else is set, we're gonna go ahead and click start. And then there is actually a terminal window running that'll give us some information about what's happening. So we can watch the terminal window and the status inside of the main win GUI window. And it looks like it finished. So now we're gonna restart the board. All right, so we're gonna need to take our phone and we're gonna go ahead and open up our camera app and scan this QR code, make sure, and then it'll let us connect to the network automatically. Or you can manually connect to it by finding the WLED AP access point and then using the password WLED123. So on Samsung phones, you're gonna to need to select always connect because it detects that there's no Wi-Fi there. There's no internet there. So we'll go ahead and jump into the sign up page, which if you don't see that, you can also open your browser and go to 4.3.2.1. And then next we're gonna to need to go ahead and set up our Wi-Fi settings. So we'll click Wi-Fi settings here, and then we can change this, the name of our Wi-Fi, put in your password. And since we're gonna to wanna to leave things for DHCP for now, eventually you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and set a static IP address, but for now we're gonna leave it just the way it is. And then if you want to, you can go ahead and change the MDNS address. So, so let's call this one 3D printer lights. All right, so now that we've got our Wi-Fi name and password in there, we can go ahead and hit save and connect. And now this should exit out and then you should be able to ping that IP address. Yep, so it should disappear. Since I didn't set a static address, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into my OpenSense firewall and then look at leases and find the device. Now, I know that I use a separate subnet for that IoT VLAN. If you look here, we'll see 192.168.3.9, that's on the correct VLAN and it identifies itself as WLED. So if I put that IP address in, there we go. We now have a fully functional WLED chip. So now let's go ahead and work on connecting the lights and testing them and configuring WLED. All right, now that we have all the hardware set up, so let's go ahead and dive into WLED and I'll show you some of the settings and how to configure the different outputs of your different LEDs. So here we are at our main page for WLED. Uh, there's a nice PC mode here, which kind of sticks everything on one screen. We're gonna go to config and then LED preferences. So right at the top here is the total number of LEDs in the system. So as I mentioned before, here's the calculator here at the top that tells you the total number of LEDs and what recommended power supply they give you. Now down here is where we actually input the different numbers of our LEDs, 
but up here is where it shows you exactly how much current you're gonna need for this particular setup. So my particular setup, I'm actually using 45 LEDs across the front of my 3D printer. Eventually I'll probably add another strip to the back, so it's a grand total of 90, but for right now we're gonna stick with just the 45. So if I head down here and I change this to 40, the length to 45, you'll see it'll recalculate here up above how, the, how big of a power supply I'm gonna actually need. So this is gonna recommend a five volt, three amp. If I did decide to go to 90, that's gonna move up to a five volt, six amp. So as you can see, you can use that to quickly tell how big of a power supply you're gonna need for your project. So down here, under the hardware setup, this is the LED outputs. Now, my board supports up to four different outputs. You're probably not gonna need each of those outputs because you can chain your LEDs together and they'll still be able to be addressable individually, but just in case, if you wanna have multiple outputs, I'll show here in a second the configuration for my desk setup here. I actually have the left monitor and the right monitor LEDs on two different channels. So, not a big deal, but that helps you set up what these go out to. So if we see here, this is actually my other one with 144 LEDs, and you'll see it has two separate GPIOs, one and two, each with around 71 or 72 LEDs on it. So on my other project where I'm using two outputs on the board, you'll notice I go from zero to 71, and then I start at 72, and then go 72 more than that. This is because WLED will treat all your LEDs as one single segment, even if you're using multiple outputs. So this is nice because then you can just set up one continuous string and then address them one through 72 or one through 71, 72 and onward. So back to our current project, I'm gonna go ahead and change the GPIO to number one because that's which GPIO we're using. And we've got it set for 45. If you have a color issue, you can go in here and change the color order, but I just leave it by the default. If you wanted to, you could also always add in a button and infrared to control your WLED directly on the board itself. I didn't wire any of the GPIOs for buttons, but that's something you can certainly add by just soldering it onto the side of the board later on. So I'm gonna save the rest of the defaults. We'll go and click save. And now looking over at the 3D printer, we will see all the lights are lit up. So when we first powered it on, only one LED was on. That's a good sign. That's sort of the default. If there's no parameters, it's gonna go ahead and just light up the first LED. So now we have all of our LEDs lit up. So before we actually play around with the lights a little bit, I'll talk about segments. So as I spoke about before, you're able to break these up into segments. It treats them as one long string of LEDs. So they address those zero through whatever. Now you can take these and break them into smaller segments. So for my desk LEDs, I have the underside of the left monitor, the underside of the right monitor, and then I have the backs of each of the monitors, each on their own individual channel. So I actually have four segments, with the fifth being one light that I use as an indicator if my microphone's on or off. But for this configuration, I'm gonna treat them as a single segment. If I wanted to add extra segments, all I'd have to do is click right here, and then I could say segment zero is one through 25, and then I could say this starts at 26 and ends through 45. So you see it splits up 25 LEDs and 19 LEDs. So if I were to save that and hit apply, now I've got two segments, so I can individually control these. So if I were to turn off segment one and take segment zero and make it blue, only half of the LEDs on the segment are turning blue. I can switch to segment one, I can make them red, and you can individually address those as you wish. But for this project, I don't really need that. I just wanted to show you what that looked like. And we need to go back in here, and it already put itself back at 45, so we're good there. So for WLED, this is the PC mode, so you're able to see the solid color effects, the multicolor effects, segment control, and presets. So here on the left are the color palettes. So this allows you to change what colors are done by the effects. So say if I select BPM, I could change the different color gradients to different colors, and it's gonna stick within this exact same group. So it allows you to really customize this to your heart's content. So this is more of just something you wanna play around with, the different effects that you have. And then up here at the top is your effect speed, how fast it flashes versus the intensity. And then there's other things like you can set sync over here if you wanna sync two WLEDs together. So there's just a ton of options in WLED. If you'd like to see me make a separate video later on, I'll be happy to do that. But for right now, everything's working. The colors are functioning as we need to. We tested red, green, blue, everything's fine. So the last two things we're gonna do is first we're gonna enable the integration with Home Assistant, and second, we're gonna go ahead and set up the integration with Octoprint. So here I'm in my test environment, go to settings, integrations, and we'll see that one of my LEDs have been auto-discovered, WLEDs, but since this is on a separate subnet from my test environment, it won't show up automatically, but that's easy to resolve by hitting add integration, type in WLED, set up another instance, type in the IP address, click submit, and there we go. Now, under devices, we've got this WLED. You can change the color palettes, you can turn on nightlight mode, you can change the speed, 
turn off sync and receive, you can do the LED count. So there's a lot of options that you can do with inside a home assistant, or you can just click on it and treat it like any other light. So you can set it to whatever color you want. You can set the brightness here, or more importantly, you can just turn it off. You've also got access to all of your effects like we had before. They're just in this nice drop down menu here. And then you also have your diagnostic information with the estimated current and maximum current possible due to the number of LEDs. So that's really cool to be able to integrate this in Home Assistant. I have my desk LEDs. When I turn on my monitors, they kind of go through a boot up sequence and then it reloads the last loaded preset, which is pretty cool. So now that we've seen how we can quickly add WLED to our Home Assistant, let's go ahead and get it integrated with Octopi. Now that we've finished setting up the Home Assistant integration, let's go ahead and get the OctoPrint integration set up for the WLED hardware. So to do that, we just need to click on the wrench icon and we can go to Plugin Manager and click Get More and search for WLED. I already have this installed, so obviously it's not gonna show up here, but we'll go ahead and X out of that and then scroll down to the bottom where we'll see WLED connection. Now the first thing we need to do is click Edit Connection Settings. This will allow us to make sure we have the right hardware that we're connecting to. So under host name, we'll put in the IP address of the device, leave the port at 80, leave the request timeout at two, in my case, I'm not using HTTPS or authorization. Everything I have is on the same network, so I don't have to worry about really, I'm not reaching out to an external location, so I don't need HTTPS enabled. So now we're gonna go ahead and those three are unchecked. We'll click test connection, connection successful, now click closed. So quickly, I'll take you through the three tabs on the WLED settings. So the first one is the printing effects, which are reacting to the different states of the printer. So if the printer's off or on or printing, it'll do different effects. Then we have the progress effects, which will allow the LEDs to change based on how far through the print you currently are, it'll act like a progress bar in Windows. So it'll show you how far along in the print it is just by glancing at the printer. Then finally the features are, or we will modify the G code stuff for later on. So under printing effects, we've got the idle connected effect, which I've got mine disabled. So the printer is on and it's connected to the Pi, but nothing's happening. I don't want the LEDs on. So I've got that disabled under disconnected. So in the event that your Pi is on, but the printer is not, it's gonna show this rainbow effect. So you can select the rainbow effect on here. Then for print started, I just have it solid green. If the print fails, I have it doing kind of a wipe effect on red. If the print succeeds, it will do this washing machine effect in blue. And finally, if you have the print pause, it's gonna do the Cinelon dual effect with these colors. Now to modify these effects, we just click this button here and it allows us to set the segment ID, which this matches the one that's in WLED. In my case, I only have one segment, so zero. Under brightness, I've got it set to 200 out of 254. So you can set this to any brightness you want between those ranges. There's your three primary colors and then the effect. Now this is the exact same effect you'll find right here in WLED. You can test them here before you set them up in your printer. The intensity is this top slider here and it's again, zero to 255. And then the speed is the same thing, zero to 255. It's currently set at 45, so on the slow side. So click close there. So now under progress effects, the main printing progress, you can select two colors, one being the base color, so the base color is gonna be orange in my case, it's red by default, and then it progresses into green. So the further along in the print, the more the progress bar turns green. You could set this to black if you wanted it turned off and only progressing forward in green and the lights off normally, but I had mine set to orange. Then under heating progress, we've got, so it'll track either the tool or the bed, and it will go from blue to red. So as it warms up, the progress bar will move to where all the LEDs are red to indicate that both of them are hot. And then the inverse is true down here under cooling progress. It'll go from red all the way down to blue, but you can only track either the bed or the tool in this case. Finally, under the features tab is where you can enable at command reactions. So these at command reactions are something that you can place into your G code that then Octoprint will interpret to do something. So in this case, if we're using something like Octolapse to take a time lapse, we want the LEDs to turn on when it's getting ready to take a picture. So in that case, we'll need to modify the code for our Octolapse to react to these two on off commands. So basically right before it takes a picture, it'll need to turn on the LEDs and then right after it takes a picture, it turns them off again. So you need to have this checked in order to allow that to happen. So I'll actually have to modify my Octolapse settings to support these new at codes versus what I was using before with the WS2812 code. So, so I'll post those in the blog post for this video, which you can find here on screen or down below. So if you do have an Ender 3v2 in a similar setup to mine and you wanna just copy my code, you can do that, or you can use it as a basis for yours. It's a little different for each printer and each setup. So we'll go ahead and restart Octoprint, even though I don't need to, but if you, this is the first time you've installed this, reboot it before you can use the plugin. So there we go. Now we have our WLED hardware set up. We've got it integrated with Home Assistant. We've texted it with our LEDs and we've got it integrated into Octoprint. 
So obviously if you're not using OctaPrint, you can skip that entire section, but hopefully this gives you an idea of what the flexibility you can do with WLED. You can do so many integrations with it, and I only really scratched the surface of showing you what you can do with it. So if you do have questions or you run into problems, feel free to jump in our Discord below. Um, I am always there answering questions if you run into problems, or if you'd like to show off your project, feel free to jump on there and upload some pictures and show us what you've set up. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the balance I'm trying to strike between reviews and projects. So if you'd like to pick up one of these PCBs, I've again got a link down in the description. If you do have feedback on the PCB, please leave them in the comments or on our Discord server. Again, I'm not ashamed to admit that I'm not the best at designing PCBs. Feel free to modify them and show me what you decided to change on it. So there you go. If you'd like to see more of my project videos, you can click on our playlist right here. And as always, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our channel by clicking our logo right here. Thanks again, and I'll see you on the next video.